went into boot camp in uniform. We had been in uniform for four months. And we were mostly um, people who had had uh, had almost graduated from college or had graduated. And so uh, we were a more savvy group than usually went to boot camp. I remember the, the drill instructors at uh, boot camp uh, were instructing their, their people that had been there maybe a month to, uh, to yell at the new recruits that were coming in, you'll be sorry. And, uh, but we, uh, our drill instructor was a corporal and he had a, a private first class assistant and they handled 72 people. And uh, we got along pretty well because we, most of us were athletically inclined. I mean, that, that was what the Marine Corps was recruiting for officers and, uh, and we could do the things that they ask of us at, at uh, boot camp. So your football and track paid off then in terms of the type of people they were uh, wanting to recruit. All right, you're on, the, uh, on board the Rochambeau and, and you end up where? Well, we, uh, we went up from San Diego to San Francisco, and uh, I, it wasn't very pleasant to, to be at that particular part of the, uh, the journey. Uh, uh, there was a lot of pitching and rolling of the ship. It's a high silhouette ship, but it's not one that, that uh, would take uh, things well. It, was, it could, could go pretty fast, but uh, uh, it had... Uh, he had to have escorts during World War II. Mm -hmm. And at San Francisco, we joined a flotilla that, uh, that had destroyer escorts and blimps and things of that sort. And we went from there to Honolulu. Now, was the Pacific, Pacific at that time, going from San Francisco to Hawaii, or still had trouble, rough water? Um, it wasn't as bad from from uh, San Francisco to Honolulu as it had been from San Diego to San Francisco. And we laid over in Pearl Harbor and I remember we could see uh, the pineapple plantations around and, and uh, the devastation of, of, of uh, December uh, 7th and uh, the uh, the Navy personnel on the ship got shore leave, but uh, the Marines didn't. Why was that? Uh, I, I think that was just a decision that the captain had made. Uh, the, uh, the first time that I walked on Hawaii was, uh, I think, uh, 96, 1996, but uh, I'd seen Hawaii before that. But it hadn't been on land. Mm -hmm. how, how long did you lay over there? Uh, just a couple of days. Then you, then you went on to, <laughs> on, still on the Rochambeau. Yeah. All right. And we're heading for Guam, but uh, we went into Kwajalein and, and we talk, and I, I uh, looked up uh, those... Uh, <coughs> Uh, Kwajalein and we talked with Bikini is now the Republic of the Marshall Islands and it, it became a member of the UN in 1991. Yeah. Okay. But uh, <clears throat> there were several times that uh, we were allowed to get off uh, and go swimming and uh, that was a uh, that was nice. But uh, there's a lot of boredom on on these ships going overseas. Yeah. But we laid over in in one of these atolls for I think three weeks because the uh, battle in Guam had taken longer than had been expected. 
But you're not involved in that. You're just no. waiting for waiting for that battle to end so we could go into Guam. And and what were you supposed to do there? Thirty fourth replacement draft was a a replacement for people in the third division, third marine division. And we were pretty much assigned to the third marine division though we weren't integrated at that time and uh, uh, <coughs> third marine division was <coughs> <coughs> was the uh, reserve division for uh, the battle on Iwo Jima the fourth and fifth divisions were uh, the assault divisions and third division was uh, uh, was the reserve division. And now, you, how long are you in Guam? Uh, <clears throat> oh, only uh, about two months or, or less. Uh, in, in February, <clears throat> we got aboard ship to head to Iwo Jima, and we were told that uh, we didn't know what the name of the place was we were going. We'd seen maps and seen outlines and, you know, the three-dimensional uh, displays of, of where we were going and we were told that it would be 10 degrees colder than uh, than what it was on Guam. Now this is 1945. Yeah. And at this point are you now integrated into your... No, we're still, still, we're still part of the replacement draft. But we are aboard uh, ships that have uh, units of the 3rd Marine Division. Uh, that is, uh, uh, I was on the APA Bolivar, uh, which is, uh, uh, I forget what APA stands for, but it's, it's uh, um, a ship designed to carry uh, large units to, to battle zones. And uh, uh, the, the Bolivar had... Uh, uh, large units of the 21st Marines, that's an infantry division, or infantry regiment, and units of the 12th Marines, uh, artillery regiment. And, Which is what you were in. Yeah. Yeah. And, <coughs> and uh, uh, D-Day at Guam was uh, February 19th. Uh, and, uh, or Iwo Jima? Uh, Iwo Jima. Yeah. Okay. D Day at Iwo Jima was February 19th, 1945. And uh, we arrived there probably during the night uh, before uh, the assault, uh, the first assault landings. And uh, uh, I was told that we were eight miles off, uh, off Guam. <coughs> and we could see. Uh, smoke from the beach and and uh, we couldn't make anything out distinctly uh, we could see the outline of the island and and uh, we could see the <coughs> the planes making dive bombing attacks on the island and uh, we could see the big shells from the battles battle uh, ships uh, going up in the air and coming down and splashing be a splash on the on the uh, island when when they explode. <coughs> now you're you're in the uh, artillery, so you're not going to be on those first assault. Uh, how how long did it take before you could uh, get on shore? Well, <coughs> we start out by saying that that uh, uh, some of the 21st Marines, uh, that's a infantry regiment, uh, were immediately assigned to get into uh, landing craft and they circled on the 19th and then came back ashore or came back on deck. Uh, it's pretty hard to climb up the the uh, rigging ladders that <clears throat> you have from these bouncing little CVPs uh, and uh, I think a couple of the of these marine infantrymen were lost in climbing back up the, the ladders. 
uh, they were very seasick from from being out there all day. <coughs> they went ashore the next day, <coughs> and uh, uh, I was uh, went ashore with twenty uh, <coughs> enlisted men in D plus three, and. Uh, <coughs> Uh, we were still in the replacement draft, and my senior enlisted man was a corporal cook, and the rest of them were were privates and PFCs. Meanwhile, you've got a front row seat to a three-day battle, uh, mm -hmm. the initial assault. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of smoke, and and uh, we got ashore, and it was very difficult to find sufficient space on the beach to put down our shelter halves. What's, what's that? Explain a shelter half. Well, that, that was uh, what wrapped around your blanket and put on your pack. And uh, when you get ashore, why, uh, two people would, would uh, put their shelter halves together and that would provide a small tent that would be over there over their foxhole, uh, and uh, uh, <clears throat> there was a lot of devastation on the beach. Uh, the uh, LCVP is a, a small craft, that, it's about right for 20, 20 people, and it could, uh, it could uh, hold a jeep and a, and a, uh, uh, a uh, 75 millimeter pack howitzer, and that was what what uh, uh, the battery that I eventually was assigned to was 75s, and uh, uh, so you take your howitzer right in with you when you when you land. Yeah, you know, yeah, but it, uh, we didn't. We weren't yet attached to uh, to a artillery unit. Uh, we were uh, we were told uh, when we got on the beach to to uh, set up our shelter halves and and to stay in a particular close area. Uh, I don't know how they they handle the knowledge of what we were and and what we were going to be assigned to, but somehow that was done and. Uh, Slowly, my uh, uh, my men were drawn off and and placed in different units, and I think the one they took first was the Corporal Cook, and uh, the uh, and uh, early in March, why I, I was assigned to uh, Fox Battery, uh, and and went went to that unit. So each year, each individually assigned different. You're, yeah. you're split up, in other words, yeah. and, and, yeah. Uh, right? and then uh, so you've got your howitzer. Uh, uh, what next? Well, the howitzer you're, battery is four, four uh, guns, and uh, I was assigned. How many men? Well, I think there's about 150 that's involved in that. Some of them are, are. Uh, Forward observers, radio men. Uh, uh, I never envied the radio men that had a 80-pound radio that they carried, and uh, the uh, <clears throat> oh, I might say that that in our preparations for going to Iwo Jima, we uh, uh, we could carry. A uh, weapon. Uh, officers usually had a a uh, carbine, but I carried an M1, a regular regular rifle, and uh, no sidearm. No sidearms. Uh, and we put tape over our insignia so that you couldn't there wouldn't be any sparkle, you know, from the sun or anything. Uh, these were the instructions that uh, 
we weren't to be distinctive, uh, that we should look like everybody else. And uh, uh, the, uh, when we got ashore on Iwo Jima, I, I found that there were a great many uh, of these big shells that had been fired by uh, by the battleships that were lined up, uh, they hadn't exploded, and they, I understand that they were finally taken back aboard ship and were reworked and were used again somewhere. And <clears throat> I, I think the first dead person I saw was a Japanese in a, one of these big shell holes, and. Uh, and then we began to see see uh, Marines that had been killed and were in their shelter hat are in their ponchos and just lined up by the row. Even and, and, and the uh, Iwo Jima is a, a small island, eight square miles, about five miles long and three miles at the widest part, and the end of it is Suribachi, uh, an extinct volcano that's about uh, 500 feet high or more. And uh, the artillery uh, was set in place not too far from the, uh, the uh, old volcano. And uh, it had a range that could cover the whole island, even the small 75 millimeter pack howitzers. Mm. Uh, our, our regiment was composed of, of three, uh, uh, three battalions of, or I think, well, two battalions of pack howitzers and, and two of 105 howitzers. So, uh, uh, and our battery, uh, I know, fired about 10,000 rounds in, in, in Iwo Jima. We pretty much used up the, the pack howitzers. Now, Suribachi, uh, of course, is so famous to us because of the picture. Were you uh, anywhere close when that picture was, I was taken? On the beach uh, when the flag went up, and, and uh, I know that everybody could see it. Uh, it it didn't make a big impression at the time, but I guess it was it was the made made a big impression back home. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I, I remember my <clears throat> dad clipped a colored picture that was in the newspaper of uh, the flag on Suribachi, and and he framed it, and it was in our house for years. Yeah, yeah. yeah it really caught attention back. Uh, on the home front, is uh, yeah the spectacular uh, picture. One of the uh, Marine Corps histories that I've read, uh, the uh, uh, the naval commander in the Pacific Fleet told the Marine commander in the Pacific Fleet that that flag means the Marine. The Marines will last another 500 years. As I understand, uh, Iwo Jima was just a, a terrible island to capture in terms of casualties. Yes, it was. You, can you give us any, you recall any <coughs> figures? Like well, if a commander loses 20%, that's, that's heavy casualties. It depends on where you were. Um, the Marine battery that I was in had five casualties. Uh, all of them survived. Four of them went back to active duty, and one was sent home because I guess his his uh, injuries were so severe. Um, some of the infantry companies had officers in them that I was associated with in OCS. And they had 150% casualties. That means they had they had more than one injury per person, or 
the people that were added to the uh, added to the platoon uh, uh, also became cavaliers. Yeah. Replacements. Yeah. Well, uh, tell us a little why. What was the Japanese strategy? Why were the casualties so <coughs> terrific? There? Well, they they had a long time to to equip their their island with uh, tunnels, uh, and we found out later that they had tunnels that were uh, four and five stories deep, and uh, uh, the uh, and that was uh, done at great difficulty because I know when uh, I went up as a forward observer, we had to put our our ponchos under us in the foxhole because it was hot. I mean that was the the uh, the results of being a, in an old volcano. And this is a long way from from Sirlachi. This was on the other end of the island. Uh, but uh, uh, we didn't see much of the Japanese. I mean, they uh, they stayed in these tunnels and in these holes and and uh, they just wasn't they weren't evident much and they could get them out with flamethrowers flamethrowers were used a lot in uh, in this battle and and the movement from one place to another was at great cost uh, tell us a little about yourself and all this what are you doing you mentioned you were a forward observer, weren't you? Yeah, I I spent most of the time early with the with the battery in in the near the executive officer who was running the the firing, <coughs> and then late in the battle, I was sent up as a forward observer. And what do you mean sent up? You're you're well, not in a plane. <coughs> no, uh, <coughs> the battery is back. Two or three miles from the front lines, and uh, and I went up with uh, with radio men and others that were going up to the forward observer position, which was behind the infantry lines. I felt a whole lot <coughs> felt a whole lot like a reserve in a football game. Being sent in late when the when the game was almost won, so that I could get ready for the next game. Okay, this uh, the next game you're talking about is Japan and, yeah. and the uh, humongous casualties on Iwo Jima really uh, affected the thinking of the military planners in in uh, invading Japan. That the belief was that in fighting so desperately in Iwo Jima, there. The home people are going to fight to the last uh, in an invasion. Well, there are two things I think uh, that I recall out of that. Uh, I, I, of course, I did see the the results very quickly out of the flying the flag on Suribachi, but also uh, uh, very early in the battle, uh, I, I saw the. The landing of the first uh, uh, B-29 uh, beat up that was shot up a lot and landed on Iwo Jima, and uh, that was uh, I think that's around uh, March 8th or something like that. Uh, is, I, is that when you get your serious precise attack? No, no, it's later. Later. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, we had orders in the in the uh, all the artillery units to cease firing because they wanted to have this uh, B-29 land 